in Jesus name we pray God bless you please be seated in the presence of the Lord please title this very short exhortation the God of the now or for somebody in bracket your miracle now the God of the now it is important to know that there is no deliverance without judgment it is important to know that God's people may never experience deliverance without the release of divine judgment every time there is a need for the ministry of deliverance it is because the people of God are tied or are held up in captivity it is because the people of God have been placed under impediments under yokes under obstacles under obstructions satanic vices that are there to ensure that they don't break free one of the first things that we are promised in salvation is freedom is liberty God wants his people set free and to live free so every time it seems as though there is a, a, a blockage or there seems to be an obstacle limiting your progress limiting your rising limiting your, 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 your freelance as far as life and destiny is concerned then there is need for deliverance that tells you that the enemy is at work at that portion or that part of your life first of all what is deliverance deliverance is simply device separation of an individual from any spirit from any system that seems to hold that individual bound or that denies that individual access to the experience of his heritage in Christ whether it is a spirit whether it is a mindset whether it is a pattern whatever it is anytime people are not where God has destined them to be it means that they are held bound or held captive by something that the enemy has projected around them but today in the name of Jesus deliverance is coming to you and your family in the name of Jesus Christ it is important to know that they were the children of God the children of Israel were God's covenant people but they were held in captivity it is possible for a man to be anointed and still be in captivity are you hearing me some of you all that you have been praying for is actually deliverance you need is deliverance you need once you are set free the same people around you that have refused to help you will rally around to help you the same opportunities that keep passing you will come to your beck and call some of us what we truly need is just deliverance we need to be separated from some ancestral yokes. In fact, there are people who are fighting battles. They don't even know they are fighting battles. They don't even know they are held back by certain impediments that are sponsored by wicked spirits. First Kings chapter 13, verse 3 to 5. Let me show you an example, an example of where judgment was released in one day. And he gave a sign the same day saying this is the sign which the Lord has spoken surely the altar shall split apart and the ashes on it shall be poured out the altar also was split apart and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord in other words, the same day that the word of God was released by the prophet was the same day that evil altar was judged. Altars are systems that legitimize the operation of spirits on the earth. Every time a spirit is at work in a family or in an individual's life, there is an altar sponsoring it. Yes, altars may be physical monuments, but beyond physical monuments, there are spiritual gateways. There are spiritual portals. You can destroy the monument, but the portal is still there activated. 
For as long as that spirit keeps operating in your life, keeps toying with your finances, keeps driving every good man that comes around you so that you don't get married when God wants you to, it is because there is an altar. Demonic attacks can happen once. And if you may call that a demonic coincidence if there's something like that. But when it begins to happen again, when you find the same attacks again and again, particularly at a, a period of time, brothers and sisters, you are dealing with an altar. It's not just to say, come out in the name of Jesus. No, there is an altar legitimizing that o- the operation of that spirit. Spirits are not fools. They understand, they, understand, they understand legal systems. They know they have no right to function on earth. So if a spirit is operating on earth, it is, he is operating in, on earth because he has been legitimized by a family or by an individual. Somebody say altars. You have to believe it too. They are real. Let me tell you. They are real. If you find a family just prospering anyhow, anyhow as though there is no Satan, it's either somebody has enacted an altar and has made a fraternity with Satan, or somebody has uh, has raised an altar before Yeshua. Only Yeshua will reign forever. Oh, his kingdom, there'll be no end. Somebody must have raised an altar before God. Some of you are here. What you are enjoying now, you know that you are not, you, you know that you and God, you are not serious. You pray today, and the next time you pray is next month. You still have all kinds of ga- ga- your friends are gangs. You have all kinds of people around you. But it seems as though everything is working for you. Could it be that your grandmother was an intercessor and she raised an altar? Though she is dead many years ago, but that altar is speaking. The Bible says of Abel, he says he was justified by God that though he was dead, yet his blood was speaking. This night and today, any evil altar that has sponsored the activity of darkness in your family and in your life, some of you this poverty respectfully speaking in your family is not that you people are lazy everybody is hard working everybody is doing one thing or the other to survive but how long will you continue this survival mentality god did not create you to survive he said he said subdue and have dominion john chapter 5 verse 9 there are same day miracles i'm rounding up now there are same day miracles and immediately the man was made well. He took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. That very same day, the man was made well. That same day, he was visited. God will visit somebody today. In the name of Jesus Christ. That one call will come to you today. And after that call, you will go back to your diary and write this day in history. I hope you know there are certain days in your life you can never forget. For some people, the days they can never forget is the saddest day of their life. How about the greatest day of your life? Can I prophesy to you? That day is today. I don't know what your expectations are, but today becomes that day where you will experience explosive wonders in the name of jesus christ for some of you it may not it may not be for your ministry for some of you it may be for your business you have done everything that you can do but the business keeps dying how that god will lift your business in one day in one day you don't need many clients one client is enough Somebody to just call you and say, I heard that you, are, you do so, 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 and so. Uh, well, okay, can you produce 100 pieces of it? Give me your quotation. And then you that you have been struggling with people around, 10,000, 20,000, you are writing a quotation of 1 million. There are same day miracles. But guess what? It gets better. There are same hour miracles. Let me show you. Matthew chapter 8 verse 13 The healing of the centurion servant 
Jesus said to the centurion, go your way, your, as you have believed, so let it be done for you. Look at it on the screen. And his servant was healed. When? That same hour. It's okay to say today, that same day. So you may have to wait, maybe you keep waiting till 12 midnight. But how about in that one hour? In that one hour. The miracle of the now is what we call instant miracles. How do you access this manifestation? Three things and then we'll pray. Isaiah 65 verse 24. The first key is by prayer. The first key is by prayer. Isaiah 65 verse 24. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will what? Answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. We read Psalms 102 verse 3 last week. Verse 2 rather. We read it last week where he said, Answer me speedily. Not just any kind of prayer. What I call traveling prayer. The prayer of travel. You pray that kind of prayer that Elijah prayed. Until there was a cloud like the size of a man's heart. Whenever you need instant miracles, you must learn to pray that way. You must learn to pray yourself into the manifestation. Isaiah 68, 66 verse 8, he said, As soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth. As soon as Zion traveled. So traveling prayers is the first key. The second key is the prophetic. The prophetic. And when I talk about the prophetic here, I'm not talking about revelatory prophecy. No. You are wearing so, 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 and so. Your name is so, so, and so. No, no. You don't need that often. When you need a breakthrough, you don't need that kind of prophecy. You need creative prophecies. Are you hearing me? There's no need to tell me how old I am or my date of birth. When I'm in a mess and I need God to arise instantly. All I need to hear from you is, Thus said the Lord, by this time tomorrow... In fact, the more powerful dimension of prophecy is the creative part. Are you hearing me? The creative part. When the word is spoken and you instantly begin to see the manifestation. The third way to access instant miracles is by thanksgiving. Thanksgiving also provokes now miracles. We're going to pray now. Did your Bible not say in Jeremiah 30 verse 19? Out of them shall proceed what? Grumbling. Complaining. Some of us have, have been complaining too much. Please listen here. Let me sound this. I, I believe this is a word from the Spirit to some of us here. Some of us have complained more than we have given thanks. So every time the breakthrough is coming... You opened your mouth and complained and it was diverted. Check your life very well. You will see. What did Jesus do in John chapter 6 verse 11? There was a problem already. Over 5,000 men, count, minus counting children and women, standing before him, all of them hungry for three days. One of his disciples said, even if we spend 200 denarii worth of, that's a, not, a lot of money. He said, we can't feed these people. There was already a situation. Andrew was already complaining. I think, was it Philip or Andrew? But the Bible says that Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, it's as if he knew that thanksgiving had instantly multiplied it. He didn't even check to see if it, if it had been multiplied. He, he gave it to his disciples. And the Bible says they distributed it around to those who sat down. And he fed everybody. If you can stop complaining and start giving thanks. Some of you don't complain outwardly. But in your heart, your heart is full of complaint. That's why you are sorrowful. That's why you are always moody. Some of us, you have parents here. Who have suffered for many years. Respectfully speaking. But you still see them joyful. And you still see them committed to the things of God. They don't miss a service. You, you. You don't have transport. Then you will not go to church. It's not like you don't have transport. You had it. You spend it on Wednesday. Then on Sunday, you didn't come. Why? I don't have transport. And you are following online now. Talking to you, you are following online. 
<laughs> Amen. I love you, but you are following online now. You are supposed to be here. You say, hey, God knows that I don't have transport now. Can you quit complaining and be grateful? And now, let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done.